growing olive trees in Central Texas and also wicking beds were a presentation on October 12th. The gray square are the olive trees. The wicking beds are around the house above. The area is out in Radiance, Southwest Austin. It's a little rocky. Soil is really nice when you find it. There's plenty of material for berms, and they do work. You can see the soil starting to collect right here. But it's never, rock is never far away. This becomes more important when you're trying to put olive trees in a row. Typically, they use exclosures out there. That is, they fence out seedlings that they want to preserve from the marauding deer. Uh, as you go out to the olive area, you have to dig a hole at least four feet deep and at least as wide so you the tree will be able to make it. Usually the soil is amended with uh, crushed shells. Hill country, they are in, uh, in close to uh, right near, Wimberley. Right, right near Jacob's Wimberley. Hole. Jacob's well. Jacob's well. Jacob's well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that guy actually had to go through many trials and tribulations. He lost the whole orchard of about uh, 500 trees oh on, a, um, on a hard freeze. And so he learned the lesson and the reason why he lost them is because most of the ones that he used was Arbequina. Arbequina is an olive variety that comes from Spain that gives very tiny olives. But the concentration of oil is extremely high. high. This is probably the highest concentration of oil of all the olive varieties. So, but this one is uh, one that is called Pendolino. And, you know, also through his son. The olive trees are mulched with a pecan mulch. They're scattered around because it's the only way you can find a deep enough hole to put everything in. This one is three years old, and he expects a few olives uh, this next season. He uses pecan mulch on the top and amends the soil underneath with shells, crushed shells. The house has full photovalic and it has solar thermal, but the solar thermal had been taken down and was being, being repaired. This is the interesting area out around the house, a beautiful garden area with uh, native plants. And the blue bonnet seemed to love the crushed granite. They use cedar splits from the sawmill in several areas, here and in a pergola. Laurel is showing us the wicking beds. They go about a stone's worth underground, and then they're lined in EPDM plastic, and then they have fill points on either end. There's an overflow so that the bed doesn't sit in water. Just perhaps the bottom eight inches has, has water in it. And that's water and rocks and sand or granite. Really nice split, split fence.
there's the uh, compost. It just piles up and goes for a year. And then the compost falls out the bottom. It's got a screen top, so that keeps the heat down, keeps it from evaporating too much. This is the nursery, the Baumschule, as they say in Germany, the tree school. Um, he's got a lot of trees that he's either have to be protected in the winter. The fruit trees all have rock mulch, and he's got a number of uh, olive seedlings that he's growing there in the back behind this fruit tree. There's some more olives. Very nice pergola made from cedar splits. This is a Texas wisteria, and it's surrounded by a number of grapevines. <laughs> grapevines weren't real productive this year. This is the water. All horticulture and human consumption is in these three large tanks. The rear tank is an assembled perimeter with an EPDM liner. This is looking out the other side of the house and we'll there's another exclosure around a tree, keep the deer away. This is a steeper ravine with very nice uh, terrace and steps. A lot of work went into this. This is a winter fire pit. The fire is kept way down low. It's quite warm and uh, it's protected from the wind. On the edge of the property, there's a gully and it was dammed up and it forms a pond that isn't permanent but it lasts for quite a time right after a rain. It's terraced on the bottom end and has an overflow so that when it fills up, it, it will overflow in a controlled fashion. There's another exclosure on the left around a madrone. Carlos is really into madrones and he keeps supporting them. He's going to get some growing eventually. This is a beautiful terraced walkway down to uh, a wildflower area. Again, the exclosures to protect seedlings and certain trees from the deer.
The silt accumulates between the terraces and you can see you're getting more vegetation now. This is looking up and that's looking back down along the stream below and walking off to a wildflower prairie area. After that we returned up to Radiance Community and surprisingly you can grow uh, blue bonnets right in the granite, crushed granite. There are a couple little areas where they have some small gutters to keep the rain from washing things out. Two of us brought cobbler and that's a sweet potato pie with pecans.